Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Enterprise Virtual Experience. Virtual, but for real. It's like we're bringing the Hanover Mesa right into your living room. And when I talk about we, I mean myself, Chris, and... Christine, well, and happy that you're here joining us. We're all excited because we got a great program, not only in this auditorium with presentations to come, but also a wonderful showroom, great tour guides, and we do have tech meetups, which are interactive sessions with our specialists. And now we're going to kick it off with 14 presentations in a crisp three hour special to give you everything you need to know about the digital enterprise portfolio, no matter what industry you're from. So our motto today is infinite opportunities from infinite data. How does this help with all the pressing issues in industry? Well, let's have a look and ask Cedric Nika, our management board member and CEO of Siemens Digital Industries. Normally, at this time of year, we would all come together in Hanover, see each other, catch up, find out what's new, but not this year. Nevertheless, business must go on. And Cedric, tell me, how often have we been in front of the camera meanwhile? Many, many times. I feel like being on a sitcom and we meet every week. Right? Yes. Netflix is calling <laughs> here. Uh, it's a challenge to stay together, I guess we can say, and you know, to keep in contact with your customers. Maybe you can tell us what you've experienced over the past year. You know what's interesting? I actually met a lot of customers and partners and I met them more often because I didn't have to travel. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing here is that they tell me that they're juggling with a lot of challenges mm -hmm. and they have to adapt to those challenges at the same time to all the global challenges. So it's pretty crazy out there. Absolutely, very demanding times. So what challenges exactly is industry facing? If I'm talking about the big challenges, it's the whole spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about population growth. We're 7.5 billion people today and within a couple of years, by 2050, we will be 30% more people, wow. 10 billion people. All of those will need more resources. Mm. They all want access to those. And at the same time, we need to be careful that we don't have too much of an impact on climate change. Last year was one of the three hottest on record. Wow. These are the types of problems which exist at the macro level. And on top of that, COVID hit us hard. And you know what? COVID is one of those viruses which profited from globalization. Never has a virus spread that fast, mm. right? And it changed markets and demands overnight. I mean, I, I can see it. My kids, my, my son, for example, has been buying yeast and buying flour and baking bread. That's something which is completely different. And actually having to stand in line for that, you know, to get it in Absolutely. the first place. Uh, I think we all remember that. So huge and urgent challenges for sure. But how can an industrial company get a grip on all these different requirements? You know what, the companies which were digitalized and automated more than the others, reacted much faster and much more flexible. Mm. And I'll give you an example. We, we talk all about BioNTech, right? BioNTech, you have to understand, was young, very innovative, and mm. we've been working with them for several years in the area of cancer research, mm. actually. But then they, they, they really sort of found out this vaccine. We have to understand that never before have we had a virus which was detected, analyzed, a vaccine developed, put into production, tested in within a year yeah, for right. billions and billions of people. And that's only possible when you go digital because normally the pharma industry is extremely regulated, but it's interesting because it's highly regulated in an old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. So you would go through production and do a lot of ticks. You, you could lose those papers, you could do certain things and putting it digitally not only made it more secure, it actually made it faster. 
Biontech would not have been able to actually accelerate their vaccine development and actually the production without the digital support which we also provided to them. So vaccines are available much faster because you're digital. Speaking of faster, time is of the essence in this pandemic. So are digitalization and automation the key components or what does it all boil down to? Data. Okay. Chris, it's data. Digitalization and automation creates terabytes of data. I'll give you an example. In just one month, mm -hmm. one manufacturing site creates up to 2,200 terabytes of data. It's, wow. it's amazing. But there's one thing which is important. It's not enough to get this data. You have to understand it, mm -hmm. and then you have to use it. Mm -hmm. Only when you do all those three things do you get the full sort of value out of this data. And that's what we do with our customers. We create what I, I love to call an infinity loop, mm -hmm. right? You take the virtual and the physical world and you bring them together so they continuously feed on each other. Mm -hmm. And so what we say is with infinite data, you can create infinite opportunities. I like the example you brought from the pharma industry, but are there other examples? I mean, obviously pharma, that's yep. the acute topic right now for, for society. Are there other examples of how you helped industrial companies exploit their opportunities? Plenty. I mean, the realization is, is that every industrial company was hit from the big ones to the small ones. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. Do you like beer, for example? I love beer. So let me take you to Australia. There's a small craft brewery called Wolf of the Willows. It used to deliver big kegs to restaurants and pubs, but you know, right? Melbourne shut down, mm -hmm. completely shut down. So mm -hmm. people had to, instead of going to the pubs, do little barbecues at home. Mm -hmm. And they were missing these sort of exciting sort of elements mm -hmm. in their lives. Mm -hmm. So Wolf of the Willows became very, very popular. Why? Because they had the data already. They had automation and digitalization implemented in their processes. And they could switch their brewing processes into cans very quickly. Mm. So they reduced brewing time from 25 days to 18 days. Mm -hmm. And they scaled up their production. They tripled their capabilities. So they had more beer from more batches with more control. So they kept business running, they kept it thriving, they made people happy. And customers had something to treat themselves, something special. Sounds good, and as soon as I get the chance to try that beer, I will for sure. But with all the different workflows in industry, how can that even work? Look, we live in a world full of silos and we need to bust those silos. Mm -hmm. Different processes, we're traditionally in separate worlds. Every step, every process was digitalized and optimized on its own. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll give you an example. Products were designed digitally. Uh, machine tools were optimized with software. Uh, we digitalized the resource planning, but we didn't connect that data. We lost all the value by connecting those different processes together. So we need to break down those silos, silo busters, and connect the dots. What silos are you looking at? I'll give you a couple of examples. There's the software silo, there's the hardware silo. There's the IT, there's the OT, there's the shop floor, and there's the top floor. These are types of silos I'm talking about. And what does this mean exactly? Look, Chris, think about how often does a product developer actually talk with the people at the production machines? Very rarely. Mm -hmm. How often does a mechatronics engineer talk with an IT specialist? Mm -hmm. How often does the shop floor, visit the people in the top floor. Mm -hmm. These are the things I'm talking about. So you basically bring these worlds together, like uh, hardware and software, for example. Exactly. We're really sort of merging these worlds. Product designers can start simulating and optimizing a product or a plan in a digital twin in advance. From their data runs through the whole complete life cycle and back. That is what I'm talking about when connecting the dots. Okay. And where does OT and IT come into play? If I think of OT, operational technologies, that generates a huge amount of data, right? In the area of the PLCs, we produce PLCs. Mm -hmm. 100 terabytes of data are produced every hour. Now, we need to understand that data, we need to use that data, and we need to bring data IT analytics into this OT world. I'll give you an example. I have a smartwatch, right? Mm -hmm. The smartwatch, I mean, we use it to see how many steps do I take, how many kilometers do I go, how is my pulse, how is my breathing? These are the type of things it does. Mm -hmm. But I'm using an IT sports app to tell me, Cedric, you know what? Mm, your blood pressure is a bit too high. You need to, to, to walk more. It gives me insight on how I can sort of optimize my life. Now, this happens, the same thing happens when you bring IT and OT together in your production. You can recognize uh, downtime patterns in advance. You can optimize your energy consumption, mm. be sustainable. You can sort of see the maintenance need. You can see what needs to happen even before something happens. So you can decide how to optimize your behavior. That's how we bring this shop floor and the top floor together. You have much more informed and confident management decision. You can actually really think, how am I going to do my enterprise resource planning? Mm -hmm. What is happening to my purchasing process? 
How can I accelerate my time to market because I have the data to make the confident decision in advance? Okay, so let me see if I got this right. If we stick with a sports app, that means I can decide on whether I wanna do more sports or not, whether I wanna work out more or not, or work on my sleep patterns. That's all my decision. You got it, Chris. So everything is connected to everything else, which basically describes the internet of things, right? The industrial internet of things. Ah. In the industrial internet of things, industrial processes are much more modular and much more flexible. But come with me, I'll, sh I'll show you. Okay. Oh, wow. Now I see what you mean by flexible and modular production. Now maybe you could tell us, are all these technologies already available? You know what, many are. And we're driving them further and further and further. I'll give you an example, Industrial 5G. It's a high performance communication network which is there to get all the data extremely fast and very reliable, exactly when you need it. Oh, okay, <laughs> I see what you mean. Um, so that is also one of the reasons why 5G is such a hot topic. You got it, Chris. Definitely, that's the reason. We're prototyping this 5G, which you're seeing here, um, as a network for industrial application in one of the exhibition halls in Hannover. Mm -hmm. So on one side, you can use it for trade shows, you can do sort of demonstration in real life, and during the rest of the year, you can actually do tests and field trials. So 5G networks enable components to mm -hmm. react to each other in real time. But is this enough to call them intelligent? I mean. Is this all they can do? You know what, Chris? Getting the data is just the first step. Mm. You need to understand it afterwards. And uh, I'll give you an example. Edge computing brings the data analytics I was talking about to the shop floor. Okay. It will increasingly not be only done in the cloud, but also locally. By 2025, 80% of all data is expected to be processed close to the user in some type of smart edge device. Mm -hmm. And only 20% will be up in the cloud in some centrally computing facilities. Okay. And I want to introduce a solution like what we call Edge for Drives, right? You can know what your machine is doing. You can know if it's operating within its parameters. You can know when does it need servicing. You know how much energy it consumes. You might or might not know, 70% of all energy in a factory is actually used by motors. Mm -hmm. So if you optimize it, it has a huge sustainability impact also. So there's a huge benefit in closing the gap between the IT and the OT world. And when you tell me this, it sounds like it's really easy to start with, but what if I don't have any IT experience at all? You know what? Most people don't have IT expertise. <laughs> <laughs> but we want everyone, everyone should deal with the data which is being generated and actually use it flexibly. Mm -hmm. And we have a solution. It's called Mendix. It's a low-code, no-code platform. It's a platform with a very, very simple sort of visual development language. Mm -hmm. So everyone can directly contribute by creating value from data by using these capabilities. Okay, now it sounds as though digitalization and automation technologies will solve all our problems. But is technology the one silver bullet that will get us through any challenge? You know what, Chris? Let me show you. Let's go back on stage okay. and actually see what I mean. The one thing which is super important is that we need to work together, mm -hmm. right? Siemens might be the number one in factory automation and industrial software, but we have to find suitable partners and work together in an ecosystem. Companies of all sizes, from industrial giants to small enterprises, have to work together to create value. And this is how we'll all be able to use our resources more yes. efficiently then, right? I mean, you mentioned before that COVID is not the only topic we still need to tackle, which we're not over with, we're not done with. Climate change is another major issue. It's the issue of this generation, right? Mm -hmm. We need to use this infinite data to save our finite resources. Mm -hmm. Industry, for example, we account for 35% of global energy consumption. And we have to address it. Every little thing we do has a huge impact. How do we reduce this energy consumption? We need to make our industrial components, our industrial processes smarter. Mm -hmm. We need to enable our customers to actually manufacture much, much more sustainable products. And I'll give you a showcase. Okay. This is an example from an industrial customer, right? Producing a packaging machine that uses 90% less energy. Wow. It's huge, right? But we don't need to stop only there. We're using our digital technology ourselves to make our product carbon footprint transparent across our entire supply chain. And we're starting with the factories, but you have to understand that not only the factories are, are, are producing carbon, mm. actually the supply chain, if you look at the, the whole supply chain, 90% of all the carbon footprint is generated across the whole supply chain. Oh, wow. And this is also what you mean by when you say infinite opportunities by infinite data. Yes, I mean, Chris, you know what? 
everyone is doing digitalization in one way or the other, mm -hmm. right? Data is everywhere. There's data in heaps. Mm -hmm. But now the whole point is we need to get this data. We need to understand this data and then we need to use this data. And how do we do it? We bring the physical and the virtual world together. Mm -hmm. We're breaking down those silos. I was talking about silo busting. Mm -hmm. Hardware, software, IT, OT, shop floor, top floor. They need to be sort of integrated in a much, much closer way than they've ever done before. And how do we do this? By extending our ecosystem and all working together to use this full potential of this data. Only then will we become more sustainable and we can only do it by working together. That's a strong message. Thank you very much, Cedric, for joining us. It's always a pleasure. And thank you also for watching. Be sure to check out our other showcases where you can see how this all comes together. See you then.